The following production is part of the We Be Geeks Podcast Collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. Hello, hello! Now now I've got a British accent. Why did that happen? I, I It's like I've been coming in here lately with, Hello, worthy friends, and I sound like I'm doing like a bad... Um, impersonation of uh, Robin Williams at the beginning of Aladdin. Hello, with any friends, and then now all of a sudden I've gone, like, full tilt, uh, I don't know, British or something. Hi, it's me, <laughs> Spider-Man Jeremy. <laughs> and with me as always, oh, you can barely hear you there. We got the Lost Boy Philip here, of course. Hello. Hello there. Can you hear me now? There you are. I'm going to turn your volume up just a bit there. Okay. There we go. There you are. Well, uh, it has been a couple of weeks since we've recorded, and uh, oh my goodness, a whole lot of stuff has happened, hasn't it? Yes. So this, we're just going to call this episode Tribute, because uh, the, the main thing is uh, we're going to do some tributes to, all, we've had a lot of people that uh, meant a lot to us as, uh, in our childhood that have passed uh-huh. away. Uh, right now I've got a list of five people we're going to pay some tribute to, yeah. uh, but of Fun course... Today. Yeah, even today we just added one, so I'm glad we didn't record until today. Uh, yeah. but, but other than that, uh, I've got uh, a few things listed out here, a lot of different things in the trailer park. Uh, you know what? And I've got news is going to be fast today. News is going to be incredibly fast. I just got like one, like two things I got to mention for news. That, But the, other than that, I'm like, you know, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's just a lot of stuff. Anyways, I could just sit here and I could babble. While the music is still rounding out, or I can make the music fade into the background. Because I've fade already previewed the whole thing. Fade it away, fade it away. Isn't that wonderful how I can do that? I love these machines. All righty. Uh, just to kind of keep things moving, uh, the the host chatter thing, I've actually got something listed down here, which I, I got an entire story when we get to what you've been playing. But what have you been watching? Something fun here uh, on uh, Netflix. On uh, I believe it's the, the channel is Mat- Mattel Action. And it's an official Mattel channel, but they've been showing, they've been putting up one episode a week. I haven't looked this week, uh, but I forgot how long they were going to do it. But they're putting up one episode a week of the 2002 Masters of the Universe series. Mm. So I've been getting a chance to watch because, you know, what? I, I, I'm pretty sure I watched the entirety of the first season when it, when it aired originally. But I didn't watch like the second season. They moved in and they had the Snake Men, uh, but I didn't get to watch that season. So, So you're talking about back in the day. Well, back in the you know two thousand two, I mean, yeah, I guess I just for some reason I didn't see the two part. I was seeing two thousand twenty two, and I'm like, oh, well, okay. Which I was like, oh wait a minute, that's not right because. <laughs> oh yeah, you can actually see my notes for once. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> We're using Skype, which is why Philip sounds a little different. Uh, I've been a little under the weather, and we it's it's late as we're recording, so I didn't get to go over to sit with him. So we're doing it across ways. Uh, but, oh, we got a few things I definitely want to make sure I announce. We're coming up on the 400th episode, if you go back Uh-oh. all the way to when this used to be the Neverland podcast anyway. So my plan is I want to coordinate. Uh, I'm going to you know, I'm gonna grab you, Phil, and uh, yeah. also another fellow that I work with, Landon, who hasn't been over to Marceline yet. And uh, oh, cool. I want to go to Marceline. Right now we're looking to do this August the 27th, and I know it's really, really short notice, uh, but any of you who happen to live in Missouri or at least somewhat close to the area, uh, I, you know, I should pick a time. <laughs> I, th- I got to think what time the museum opens. But, yeah, we're looking at August the 27th. If you want to come into town, into Marceline, uh, I fear we're going to make a day of it. Well, at least uh, you, you can do all this stuff really in the morning and in, uh, in early afternoon you can be headed back home. Uh, we'll go to the museum. We'll eat at Ma Vicks. We'll go all to the important places in town, like the the municipal park where the swimming pool used to be, over to uh, Walt's old home. Go see where the Dreaming Tree used to be. Go, I mean, just cover the whole thing with as much factoids 
are stuck in my brain, uh, I will share all the knowledge that I gained over the years of when this used to be a Disney show. And I thought it would be a lot of fun and be a great stuff to share, even with uh, good old Landon. Uh, he wanted to be able to come on the show sometime. Uh, so since he's met me, he's learned the weirdness that is me. We had a good old time, actually. Uh, we did a film shoot for a commercial uh, for for uh, Sea Life Kansas City. Uh, well, it, it was more of a... Um, we shot video for them to have a video to explain why they have stingrays and not turtles in one of their exhibits and everything. So they, they, they didn't realize that we make commercials for our channel and not for, you know, we don't do usual video production. But while we're headed down there, we're, you know, Landon and I are seem to be very similar in opinion on a lot of different things. So I, I, awesome. I, I think you'll enjoy meeting Landon. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that he and his wife can come along. He's a, he's a newlywed. He's a young, a young pup, although. Awesome. Poor guy. He's in his like I think early to mid twenties, and he's already lost a lot of his hair. The poor guy. <laughs> well, I have nothing. I can't say a thing. Yeah, yeah but, but at I'll least we're in, in our forties, so <laughs> let's loosen I'll our hair. A little, a little before that, and mine has, some has to do with brain surgery and all. But I will say this: you now have a song stuck in my head. You know what that is? Oh, Marceline, why well, can't you be you true? <laughs> oh, Marceline, to walk you are true. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, Walt, he made Mickey Mouse for me and you. <laughs> Indeed he do. Uh, well, oh, hey, that rhymed. I didn't even mean it for it, too. Oh, and I rhymed again. Oh, my gosh, I can't turn it off, you. That gummit. I need some gum to chew. Anybody want a peanut? Okay. You make me blue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, oh, I got some stories to tell you on what have you been playing and I think right. I mentioned this on the last episode. I, I had to go. I had to fly solo last time, but I had gotten on. I had been playing through Borderlands, and I got stuck. So I thought, well, let me play something else for a little while. And uh, because I have the the PlayStation Plus Extreme, whatever the full tilt account, I can play a lot of games. And uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is available. And I think I mentioned last week that I was started playing that one, and I, I think I talked a little bit about it. I love how it's, it's actually got a lot of 80s music that plays, uh, and it's, it's a really a lot of fun game. Well, as it is now, I'm stuck on Guardians of the Galaxy as well. Cool. But, but here's what's funny. So I thought I was going to play a lot of, and basically by stuck, I mean I found an area that I keep getting killed. Uh, I've also found myself, you know, I, I thought, oh, look, Arkham Origins. I haven't played that in a long time, and I've, I've only beaten it really on my Xbox 360, and I haven't played it on, like, the PlayStation. So I thought, let me play through that. And I got stuck uh, fighting Deathstroke. I used to be able to beat Deathstroke, but for some reason, I cannot seem to beat Deathstroke. No. But since I have all these games available, so I get stuck, I go and I'll play something else. Uh, yeah. I went back to Borderlands, and the guy that kid kept sending at me that was killing me it was suddenly not there anymore, so I managed to advance somewhere on Borderlands. So I'm starting to move along, but really all of this just to you know, bide my time waiting for August the 30th, because you know what August the 30th is? Oh, yeah. I, I will say this. As far as uh, what I've been playing, kind of goes back to what I've been watching. Well, we left um, that hanging, though, August the 30th. We know what that is, and you said, oh, yeah, but we didn't tell them. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you go ahead, son. Because you don't know, do you? No, I know if it's what I'm thinking, I have a game coming out, and I'm trying to remember, is that the 30th or is that before that? I'm, I'm thinking it's coming. Oh, the Cowabunga well, Collection. That, oh, that. Well, that I got one. something coming up before that. I got coming up with something coming up before that. The Madden? Of all, that, <laughs> yeah, Madden, baby. Madden. I've ordered the one that I can get the great big tin that looks like the original game, you know. I'm so excited about that because you know me. I love in fact, Jeremy, I wouldn't even I didn't even think about it. I've been watching so many shows with my nephew. He's been over been, that's why I haven't gotten to I played a lot of games with him, including that other Turtles game and, and wrestling and a few other games, you know. But while I've been doing that, I've been watching a lot of movies and fun things. And I don't know if you remember this, Jeremy. You remember the old movie from 1994 called Little Giants? I'm trying to think the, if I watched that movie. Yeah, it had little. Uh, it had. Uh, I meant to say, uh, it had uh, Rick Moranis. Oh, yeah, Rick Moranis and, was their coach. And, yeah, and uh, what's his name? Who played? Um, oh, Al Bundy. Ed. Um, Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill. Yeah, he but was he, like the high money little league football team, wasn't he? Ed O'Neill wasn't. Yes. Yeah, and he, you know, it, but all of a sudden, right in the middle of it, uh, John Madden shows up. Oh yeah. And playing himself, you know, and, and that was so c cool because I was already talking about Madden, and all of a sudden, here he comes. He's like, <laughs> hey, you know, we can't go here and here, and he's drawing like he does on, a, on the, this is on the map, and he's doing the little circle here and here and here, and we can't even find where we are. And you're like, oh, man, I love you, man. Madden, oh, you're the best. Uh, so, 
and then also I watched Prey. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes, P R E Y Prey, and that's the prequel to um, yeah, then to, a new Predator, which it's an R-rated I, movie, so we won't generally cover it. I will say this: that is the only other Predator movie that I think is a great film, a great great movie. I'm just telling you, a great movie. They actually but, didn't go so woke with it. I was kind of worried about it because the, the like the the only thing I saw on the premise was this girl that uh, because she's a woman, she's not allowed to become a hunter, but yet she's going to be the one that yeah. kills a predator. Well, in that case, it's because it takes place back in the 18 um, yeah with Native American tribes and. Yeah, I can't remember the exact year. I, I maybe I didn't pay enough attention. But uh that being said, they did a great job. Really great job. And uh man, it was fun. It was a really fun film. And I gotta say it's my second favorite of the Predator films. Of course the original. The original is my favorite. I mean, even Jesse Ventura gave it a, a nod, which he doesn't do that very much with the movie. But it was it was pretty good. Okay. But because it's an R rated film, we don't really give it recommendations. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it's violence. Definitely violence. Yeah. So I was like, we, you know, I still try to keep this a family show, so we try to keep what we talk about away from that. But thanks for driving us into the R-rated territory, Phil. You're welcome, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just saying it's very entertaining. It's very entertaining. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. And I mean it. Edge of your seat. <laughs> well, uh, I actually got two news stories, so let's hit that sounder. Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. All right, I'm going to finish the news in two sentences. Batgirl has been canceled. Ezra Miller has been arrested. Thank you very much, DC Sucks at Movies. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I'm actually glad that they're going to go somewhere else with that because with the, I'm talking about the Batgirl stuff. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want don't don't get me wrong. I would never wish bad on anybody. I'm not talking. About, I mean, I'm talking about with Ezra. I would never wish bad on anybody, but um, I didn't want him to be the Flash. To be frank about it, and, and because I saw him on Justice League, and I didn't care for him as the Flash. Yeah. So I was hoping they would go with someone else. Not because I wish bad on anybody. It's just I just don't agree with him as that character. But um, as far as the Batgirl thing, mm, I didn't want a, a woke thing, and that's just me. Yeah. And, uh, and apparently I, no, I, neither does the new guy running things for Warner Brothers. I'm glad because mm -hmm. the thing is, is there's no reason to get political with any of this, with yeah. any of it. And and I, it sounds like it might be going away from the Supergirl as well. Uh not because it's a. By the way, it says nothing to do about being a girl. That's not what it is. I mean, obviously these these are girl characters. That's not yeah. what it is at all. It's just the the script doesn't sound like it's. They should have been thinking this stuff through, uh, really. Yeah, you got to write right. a good story first, and just, and then do that. Story is supposed to be everything. Even George Lucas used to tell people that story is everything. Yeah. Everything else is secondary. You can add a little. If you have to, which I don't think you have to, but if you have to have a little something in there, okay, <laughs> I don't know why you have to, but that that should never be your first main thing yeah. is some kind of political scam or whatever. Yeah, no it agendas. No, no agendas. Now, yeah. I wanted to get through the news real quick because we got, for like main content, we got so much stuff we're going to talk about later, my goodness, that now sure. we got to go straight to the trailer park and poor Phillips at the disadvantage. He's going to be able to see my screen. But he's not going to be able to hear it. But oh, here comes that sounder, which he can't hear this either. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator? Give me that sugar. Come here. Oh. Oh. Get him, Mama. Oh. Get that gator. Oh. Oh. The Neverland Trailer Park. There we go. And now, because Philip, uh, well, hopefully you're going to get to see this screen when I click this. I heard it, by the way. <laughs> to school already? Too bad we can't have summer forever. There it is, our new school. New classrooms. New subjects. I feel a stomach ache coming on. There's a special test you can take. If you pass it, you never have to return to school again. Yay! This isn't going to end well. 
Today we are studying the television. Ooh. I told you this teaching stuff was a piece of cake. It's easy when you make it all up. potato -ium. Huh? I think you mean potassium. Yeah. Is that going to be on the test? It takes a lot of courage to admit when you're in over your head. We students might not always give you teachers enough appreciation, but in my eyes, you're all heroes. Here you go, Miss Othmar. This should get you through the next few months. <laughs> hey, Snoopy, age 34. <laughs> August 12th. Yay. Uh, uh, for anyone who has the uh, Apple uh, TV, I, which... I do. Uh, yeah, and I thought I was borrowing your account, but I've noticed I'm logged out again, so I think they caught me. <laughs> so, uh, well. I'm going to have to come over to your house so we can watch this. Lucy's School, yeah. a brand new peanut special, which uh, there it's, it's. I don't know exactly why Lucy is trying to teach them stuff, but uh, well, that's, that's, that's what's going on. It's Lucy trying to teach them before they start a new school. That's this Friday. Yeah, that would be this Friday. So, yeah, sometimes, well, dang it, don't I have something I got to do this? What's coming up this weekend? Why am I going to remember the 12th for? I don't know. Well, for, oh, that's payday. <laughs> the 12th hey, is payday. Pay. Yay. So, yeah, we'll have to go and watch that uh, yeah, over at your fun. place or something. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. Looks a lot of cute. Although I think they kind of spoiled the end because here they get into the new school. And I guess Lucy has learned some new lessons because uh, I appreciate the bit at the end that we're you know, Snoopy has always tried to sneak into the school and always gets kicked out. And uh, so we see him sitting in a desk outside the school and Lucy telling Snoopy what page number they're on. Uh, yeah, it's cute. <clears throat> I couldn't hear it, but I could at least see bits and pieces of it. Yeah. So I'm fairly excited. I think this is going to be neat. Uh, so I, I want to definitely check it out. I enjoyed the other show they had of it. That was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I saw any of the, the Apple stuff. They had like Snoopy going to space or something. Yeah, so that was fun, but they had a lot of neat uh, shows on there, Snoopy, and it was a really cute show, very fun show. Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm always nervous. Like now that they, they got past the Charles Schultz age, like okay, can they can they really bring back the magic of what he was able to do? But here's who's something: ever in it, who's ever in charge of it seems to be doing a pretty good job with it. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure his like his family is making sure that it stays true they to are. what he created. But They're here's something. His Good. I didn't know it was coming, but we already know that uh, on Disney Plus we're going to have a live action version of Pinocchio. But uh, I'm I not too interested this. in that one. I uh, actually I'm more interested in seeing this Guillermo Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio. Yeah. They were talking about this. Yep. From my many wanderings on this earth, I had so much to say about imperfect fathers and imperfect sons and about loss and love I've learned that there are old spirits who rarely involve themselves in the human world but on occasion they do I want to tell you a story it's a story you may think you know but <laughs> you don't a story The Wooden Boy. Where am I? I feel as though you've been here before. The Wooden Boy with the borrowed soul. Be his son. Fill his days with light. We shall call you Pinocchio. What a day. Now this actually looks very, very cute, and it's stop-motion puppets. Uh, let me read to you what it has here on the uh, official page here. Academy Award-winning filmmaker Guillermo del Toro reinvents, literally reinvents, the classic tale of the wooden marionette who is magically brought to life in order to mend the heart of a grieving woodcarver named Geppetto. This whimsical stop-motion film directed by Guillermo del Toro and Mark Gustafson follows the mischievous and disobedient adventures of Pinocchio in his pursuit of a place in the world. Now, uh, 
the Disney version of Pinocchio, that doesn't stay with the books. This one clearly is not staying with the book. In fact, they're looking from what it seems to show, this looks like Geppetto had a son that died. And, they, t- oh. you know, you've got Ewan McGregor is the voice, apparently, of uh, of Jiminy Cricket. And it's talking about, mm-hmm. and, and even the, their Blue Fairy is saying that uh, you, the Pinocchio is a borrowing a soul. So I'm thinking, okay, Pinocchio is basically the soul of Geppetto's son, apparently, in this version. So they give it a reason for Geppetto to exist. But uh, the the Pinocchio of the book, uh, which was a series of short stories that appeared, I think, in newspapers or magazines originally. Then they were collected into the book. Yeah. Uh, and he's a bad boy. And he's an, Pinocchio is an example of what not to do. And that was the lesson he taught children is don't do what Pinocchio is doing. He was a yeah, very he- bad kid. Disney did right, I think, by trying yeah. to make it to where he learned by not being a punk. But um, one thing, I, I knew that Ian McGregor was uh, was Jiminy Cricket only because the only preview we had before showed basically a little bit of Jiminy, kind of his, his shadow, mm-hmm. or, or I should say his, uh, you can see around him, and he was talking a little bit, and you could tell it was Ian McGregor because he has such a you know great voice. Yeah. So I'm I'm pretty excited for this is supposed to be coming out by, for the holidays this year on Netflix and uh, I'm pretty excited for this. This actually looks pretty good, and I guess that's what Guillermo yep. del Toro has been working on instead of doing a haunted mansion movie because the haunted mansion movie has been passed on to someone else. Which oh by the way, Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, somebody else has been announced uh, to be playing. And Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be playing Madame Leota in this new haunted mansion you know, movie. That's cool because she was in the first. If you will, the modern horror story movies, uh, the slasher uh, movies. She was at the beginning slasher of slasher movie. movies. Yeah. yeah, so that's really fitting. Yeah, and I saw somebody make the joke. It's like, so what? Did Michael Myers finally chop her head off, and now I stuffed it into a thing, and she's <laughs> <laughs> Madame Leota? It would be funny though, just as a little, I guess, joke or not. If Mike Myers would be in this film, oh, oh, door going, <laughs> oh. welcome. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to let that one die a natural death. Uh. No, but, but Mike Myers doesn't let her die a na- Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, stop. Oh, stop. Okay. Well, the next thing that's probably going to also, I think, die a natural death, because nobody asked for this. And I, I mean, the movie is fantastic, but I don't know if the series is going to be so much. I cannot play you the audio for this upcoming Amazon series because somebody dropped a S bomb. A League of Their oh, yeah. Own as an Amazon series. Uh, it looked like they're going as woke as they could possibly maybe go a bit, though. Like, they're going to try to push as much stuff in there as an agenda. And so I don't know if this is going to have the same charm as the movie. The movie is fantastic. But Gina Davis and Tom Hanks, oh, my goodness. I did be watching it uh, this year a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's a great movie. But but a lot of people that went, when I was looking on YouTube where this trailer popped up, everybody was saying, the movie was so great. Why would you ruin it by making it into a series? Let's leave it well, alone. Yeah, it was- a true story too. The, the the movie. Yeah. Well, based off true. I mean, I don't think the actual characters were truth, but the events were true. Yeah. So the, yeah, they've kind of yeah. got to reinvent, and they kind of can tell a new story. And it's like, okay, you know, telling a story in that era and come up with stuff was not a bad idea. But uh, I would maybe title it something else and not try to make it associate too much with a with a movie that is now kind of a classic. So I have a feeling we'll just let that die a natural death on Amazon. But who knows? Maybe people watch it. But here's something else. Now, I have not f- even finished the first season of Picard, but uh, they put out a season three teaser for those of you interested. And uh, listen for all the special voices you're going to hear. You're only as good as those around you. Those days on the Enterprise made me a better man, a better father, a better friend. I thought I could inspire people to bring justice to an unjust universe. You have no idea how hard it is to be in this world. Do not presume to know what I have and I have not sacrificed for this. We have to be willing to go through that door to what's next. There's a whole universe out there. Wherever you go, we go. Here, in this moment, let's do what we spent our lives learning to be great at. As long as you and your crew remain steadfast, Never without hope. So the final season of Star Trek Picard, they've pretty much brought back nearly the entire cast of The Next Generation. Yep. And I know they're doing it just to try to get me to g- jump back on the wagon and watch. But hey, I, boy. Uh, <laughs> season two is pretty good. 
I've heard a lot of mixed reactions because there's a lot of agenda, and I hear they decided to make Picard kind of have a a, a a gay love towards Data. No, no, no. Oh, good. Not really. Because I was uh, like, really? Well, that doesn't fit with no, the character. His love towards Data, he does have a lot of love towards Data, but it's more of a um, brotherly, fatherly type of love. And he loves him very much. Uh, just the same kind of love I have towards you and my other best friend, Seth. I mean, I love you all very, very much. But anyone who's a Christian uh, or has any kind of love towards their family would understand this. Christian love is called agape love. Yeah. And uh, family love is called filial love or friendly love is, uh, is filial love. And any romantic love is called eros love yeah. uh, or romantic love. And there's a difference in that. Now, he end up ha- he loves – he actually is in love with a woman oh, in good. the season – who is actually a uh, a Romulan that he saved in season one? You find out who is married in season one, but but her love dies, and why does he die? Because the actor literally died after season one, mm. and who was her husband. But you find out that uh, he loves her. But it's a long story. You have to watch yeah. season two. I'd say don't spoil the whole thing because I might get around to finally finishing the first season. I I've, I've started it up like because, twice and never finished it. I thought it was sad because the actor that plays her her man in the first season. He was really kind of cool. When I found out he literally died, I mean, the actual actor died, I was sad about that. But one thing that you are going to like for season two is Q comes back. Yeah, I did but, see some stuff on that. And I, that I almost watched because of like, Q. But yeah. And Q, Q, one great thing about Q, too, is that you get to see that Q's relationship with, with Picard is very interesting because it's not the enemy that you think he is. He's He really admires Picard in a lot yeah. of ways. And yet doesn't like him either he's like a frenemy in a sense <laughs> yeah he is de- he always was in the next generation too he was you know he always wanted to be able to help picard but uh, his his pride was a problem <laughs> I, I have a problem with uh i'm talking in real life i i don't i'm not a big fan of whoopi goldberg but at the same time i love the character she played yeah guinan and, and i kind of feel sorry for whoopi because her character guinan as you know is not supposed to age and yet, of course, she's a human. Uh, Whoopi is, and yeah. and she's gained a lot of weight. And I mean, this happens as you get older, and and everything. And so they had her come back, and they kind of had to explain why her character, why she gained weight, or whatever it was. I felt kind of bad for her, uh, for Whoopi, because I thought, you know, that's got to be kind of. You know, disheartening to have to go on there and explain why your character is aged and gained weight. You know, it's, you know, but then they had another actress play the younger version of Guinan, which is different and bizarre in a sense. But it was neat, and she did a good job. I mean, she she acted just like Whoopi does. Yeah. So that's cool. That's season two. And I've been hearing a lot of nice things about uh, what is Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Uh, but- Pretty good so far. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of nice things about it, and I, I guess I don't need it's to it. have watched Discovery because I heard Discovery was not that great. I didn't so, like it. I didn't like Discovery much at all. But see, but uh, not saying it's all bad. But but uh, so far, Strange New Worlds. What I need to finish that season. Yeah. But it's really good. And there's at least one character that has crossed over from Discovery onto Strange New Worlds, from yes. what I've heard. But yes. Yes, I guess I can right. get introduced to the character if I get one. But I don't trust CBS with Star Trek. You know, you know? The character. Honestly, you already know that character, um, Pike. I mean, I'll just say it. You oh, well, like, I know about P- Captain Pike, but I, I thought there yeah. was another character from the Discovery that was that was becoming part of Pike's crew. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And I mean, obviously, and I, you know, I'm uh, very old school. That doesn't surprise you, I know. But so when you see characters, I won't say any of the names, but if you see characters from the old days. Obviously, I'm going to go back to the old school actors who are my favorites, but mm-hmm. they do a pretty good job on these. And um, and I, it's kind of nice to see them. And it's kind of nice to see some things. that they do. I think they do a good job, uh, especially in the sense that it feels like Star Trek. I, that's why I don't care as much for the what they call it. Um, Kel, I can't remember the name of the new. The Abrams. <laughs> the J.J. Abrams they universe. Like, they call it like a Kel. I know, I'm sure someone's yelling at Kelvin me Kelvin right or something, yeah. Kelvin's the Kelvin, and but I and it's it's fun, but to me it's like a Elseworld. Yeah. Star Trek, you know? <laughs> it's like a what if Star Trek. <laughs> well, you know, as good old Sylvester Stallone, I follow him on Instagram, oh. and he talks a lot about what he's doing. But he didn't mention a thing that he was working on this movie. But uh, this trailer is called S- Samaritan. <laughs> I'm pretty excited for this. Take a listen. <laughs> Wait up, wait up. What do you do with all this junk? Keeps me busy. 
Another long night of crime and violence. Some say it's only a matter of time before the city implodes. I think we're finished here. Go on, beat it. I found him. Samaritan. Samaritan died 25 years ago. That's what they say. You think you live across from a superhero? Do you have a therapist, kid? Kid. Samaritan is dead. I pick up garbage for a living, pal. Samaritan cleaned up the streets. <laughs> you mind your business, I'll mind mine. I don't believe you! Okay. I'm cool. How strong are you? <sighs> Not as strong as I once was. Things start to fall apart when you stop caring. And I stopped caring a long time ago. How come you hate who you are? For some people, it's too late to change the damage they've done. He's hiding something. I want him dead. Really? The things you bury tend to haunt you. Why did you disappear? this. August 26th, coming to Amazon Prime Video, Samaritan. Uh, basically, this is this is a lot like what uh, that Will Smith movie where he was supposed to be really bad at being a superhero. This is what that movie could have been, except for it's Sylvester Stallone as a retired superhero who's tried to hide out, don't know mm-hmm. why, as a garbage guy. But a kid finds out that he was a superhero and still has all his powers, but he's not as strong as he once was. You know, it oh. kind of reminds me of that character I used to draw. Remember Grudge? Yep. That's what <laughs> yeah, the mask, totally. <laughs> yeah, I may have to. I may have to draw that again just for the fun of it. <laughs> oh, but it's you know, how perfect is this? The Sylvester Sloan being that he's an older guy, but he's from the yeah. '80s. You know, Rocky and Rambo. He played all these big superhero type characters. Oh, yeah. To him, uh, be playing as a retired superhero. That's perfect. That's perfect, man. Absolutely. He, he, man, I love that guy. He's just so much fun. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for this. So that's coming up. Like that'll be uh, next week. Yeah, Ju- Mr. Judge Dredd. I am the law. <laughs> I am the law. Yeah, we won't talk about the, whether that movie was really that good, but it's it's kind of stupid fun. <laughs> yeah. But now here's something else that uh, because of video game, th- I don't. Uh, this might be more music than anything, but let's just hit this. But uh, uh, I, I. I only played, I think, the original Tekken in uh, in arcades, and uh, I haven't really followed up on Tekken. But I thought people would be interested to know the Tekken Bloodline, uh, an animated feature. Uh, maybe it's a series. I think it's a, a, a like a feature thing. It's coming to Netflix. What is it that haunts you? Whose eyes peer at you from the dark? I see you watching me with those eyes. Kazama, think of your helplessness when Ogre killed your mother. In order to defeat him, you must purge the Kazama pacifism and stoke your Mishima fire. You've got your secrets and I've got mine. I'm going to tear you down completely. Then... I will build you back up. How do we know when to draw the line? Your body itself will be a weapon. Mishima style is the only way. It's time. Welcome. Only the best are invited to compete in the King of Iron Fist competition. What's up? Hi. Williams is a killer. (laughs) She doesn't look too dangerous. (laughs) That's the spirit. You two are friends? No. I'd love to teach one of Heihachi's goons a lesson. I'll see you in the ring. 
Good luck tomorrow, kid. So you too. Who needs luck? I've got the skills. Do not advertise you're related to Mr. Kazuya Mishima. Kazuya was evil in its purest form. The Mishima bloodline is tainted. The last thing you want to do is get tangled up with the Mishimas. Every opponent you defeat is one step closer to defeating Ogre. Challenge accepted. Uh, when is it coming to Netflix? Let me take a look down here. Uh, let's, let's read what it says. Uh, August 18th, power is everything. Jin Kazama learned the family self-defense arts. Kazama style traditional martial arts from his mother at an early age. Even so, he was powerless when a monstrous evil suddenly appeared, destroying everything dear to him, changing his life forever. Angry at himself for being unable to stop it, Jin vowed revenge and sought absolute power to exact it. His quest will lead to the ultimate battle on a global stage, the King of Iron Fist Tournament. Now, the one thing that I've noticed in this, because I know nothing of Tekken, other than I played the first game, but I used to play as a character called Law, and he was kind of a Bruce Lee clone because every fighting game back in the 90s had to have a Bruce Lee clone, right? Uh, there's there's Leif, Leif, Leif Fong, was it, uh, in Street Fighter 2? Uh, and then, of course, you had uh, um, Liu Kang. You know, there's always a Bruce Lee character. And I did not see Law popping up in this trailer, and I wonder if it's because they don't want to have a character compared to Bruce Lee so much. They don't sure. want to get into trouble, uh, but this kind of looks cool. I mean, I don't know anything about the story of Tekken, uh, really. I like I said, I've only played the first game back in the arcades, uh, and I haven't followed up on that game series. But you know, with the success, I guess, of that last live action Mortal Kombat, which by the way, there is a sequel to that one apparently in the works now too. Uh, they decided, you know what, this could be a viable uh, franchise if done properly, and so here we go. We've got an animated Tekken coming out on Netflix August eighteenth. Did you ever play any Tekken? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, well, it was fun. <laughs> and one thing I kind of learned with it is uh, I noticed if I would always go more defensively, it seemed to work better because uh, if I would attack, the computer would block it and then counter really fast. So I, for, for a fighting game, I would kind of sit there. I'd wait for the computer to attack, and I'd sidestep and then come in, which actually works pretty well. You and I used to play the original uh, Soul Edge which I think that it was the name something else in the arcades or whatever, but uh, where you, you, I you had the weapons. The I don't remember how or from when I saw them, but I do recognize them. Maybe it's from a toy line. Who knows? But I do recognize them. Oh, that, what, the Tekken characters? Or you mean the Soul yeah. I recognize the, the 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 guy she was fighting against with the hair going up on the sides. Yeah, and the crazy the, hair. It's Japanese yeah, style. I recognize you know? some of that. But maybe it's because some of the characters to me, and this is not a uh, an attack on any style of anything, but – um, for some reason, they always kind of remind me of one another. Like, for instance, I always thought they looked a little bit like Street Fighter characters. Well, yeah, it's that Japanese anime style. Uh, yeah. So a lot of the character designs end up coming out very similar. It's it's, yeah. a, it's very anime style with crazy spiky hair. You know. Well, yeah, like <laughs> the guy with the blonde hair sticking straight up. Yeah. He was wearing red, so he looked like a combination of a couple of different Street Fighter characters to me personally. Like Ken and Guile mixed up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like. like and guy, I'll call him. <laughs> yep. All righty. And then one last trailer, something I had no idea was coming, but I'm sure doggone excited. This looks kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mater, want to race? Uh, well, come on. <laughs> Look at you, all charged up to race. But I don't have a chance against her. Oh. <laughs> come on, Lightning. Look, Just letting you know I'm going to be gone because I'm heading back east to go to my sister's wedding. Wait a minute. You have a sister? Whoa! That goes to mine, man. It must be ages since you've seen her. What if I go with you? Really? Let's make it a road trip. There's thousands of things to see. But just the tiniest little taste of death. Oh, dear mother. I'm guessing this is the beginning of something great. You got that right. <laughs> we wander the back road. This is so cool. 
Make new friends. Hey, huh? where are you guys headed? I gotta rinse off this old baggage. Ah. Whoa! Look at you. What about me? Mm -hmm. Can't mess with perfection. I spy with my little eye. Two quackity kitty cars. Points for pageantry. This is not what I expected. Whoa! All the bumps along the road. That's what makes life worth living. Oh. <laughs> Peter! I got you, buddy! I love these! I don't know. Come on. Look, you picked the last stop. World's largest tire maze. McQueen! Mater! McQueen! Mater! McQueen! Parents, streamed on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> September the 8th, we've got Cars on the Road, a nine-episode road trip going to Mater's sister's wedding. And every episode, they go to a different weird roadside attraction and get into crazy adventures. <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> That's going to be great. It's like getting back to the original Cars characters in there. Oh my goodness! But it just looks like silly fun. I, I, it just cracks me up that the the last bit where where he's like, "Well, hey, you picked the last roadside attraction, and the world's largest tire maze was not great." And they showed them all two opposite sides of the maze, and they're going, "McQueen, Mater, McQueen, Mater," when they lock in find each other because it reminds <laughs> me of us in corn mazes so much. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh. So that's September the 8th. Uh, I'm definitely checking that out on Disney+. Plus. That just looks like a heck of a lot of fun. So, yep. All right, we don't have a movie review, but I got a ton of stuff to get into some main content. And uh, if I had a fifth button, I could have a sounder from when we get into our main topics of the day. Will you stop this foolishness? What foolishness would you like to see? But uh, what I want to dive into first, mainly because I've been seeing a lot of stuff... Um, even today, there was stuff with, you know, I don't know how Captain Marvel became a topic again. Um, but there was, uh, I think even with uh, with Ms. Marvel or something, I, I didn't watch all of the Ms. Marvel series either. But yeah, I didn't, didn't watch it. I want to dive into what actually makes a good character in a story. And I've got to note, wherever they start, we expect them to grow. Like, and I want to take some examples. Superman. When we first meet, of course, we first meet him as a, a child, but he's already has some power. Uh, but we get some time for him to grow up. But when he learns to become Superman, he has ten years that he's in the Fortress of Fall Fortress of Solitude. Wow, the Fortress of Solitude, learning <laughs> things, and we don't, and we see in Superman too, he hasn't gained a whole lot of fighting ability because no one expected him to fight anything that would be at his level of power. Came close, yeah. Spider Man. When we meet him as meager Peter Parker, even when he gets powers, we see him screw up. We see him slam into a wall trying to learn to web sling. Uh, we see him mess up, getting beat up by the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Even when they get powers, they still have to learn things before they become. You know, it, it's and that was, it was what makes a good character. Uh, so they they start out with no abilities, or they don't gain. You don't get abilities or skills that you don't earn them. That's how you yep. make a good character. I don't care if it's male or female, but I had people I saw on Twitter, and I don't know why I ever got on Twitter and looked at this. I, I, there was something trending I was curious about, but someone dared to say, well, but Captain America didn't learn how to use his powers. I'm like, okay, let's look at Captain America. He went to basic training, learned everything there. Even if he wasn't physically able, he had the knowledge, and when we see him chasing at the, the bad guy there in the first Captain America movie, we see him mess up with his powers and jump actually through a window, and he screws up a lot, because he's not used to his power. Power. And he wasn't even able to use it because the ca the general wouldn't let him. If you recall, yeah, he wasn't got, get to go on the field until he just took the guts to do it himself. Uh, but you know, we, good characters, male or female, whatever color, a good character, we want to see them grow and become. And if they're just suddenly given the ability and the skill to know it, as if they always had it, just to make them awesome. That, that's when we end up calling them Mary Sue's or there, I, there was a, well, I can't, apparently there's a name for a male that ends up having it, but it, it doesn't happen as often with male characters. It seems like in a, a push here lately that we don't want to make female characters as, as good. We just want to make them instant awesome. Cause like, I, I think I've already talked about she Hulk how where she's suddenly like, she's just better than Hulk already automatically. Uh, and, but it's like, that's not how you make a character 
good and and all of story when you create a good character they they have to rise to an occasion you know talk about some female characters ellen ripley she's you know an astronaut she has to rise to the occasion in aliens because she cares enough to go save a little girl that she just risks everything and you know prepared but she's risking death severe you know but it's there's a difference between rising the occasion and and finding yourself capable of doing something and well, like, oh, well, this is easy for me because I am awesome. That's one thing I got to say, even though we're not necessarily promoting it. But in the movie Prey that I just watched, she had to earn her way even in that because she kept failing. Good. And I, I liked it because not because, oh, a woman messed up. No, but she thought that she could do something she couldn't do. But eventually she kept learning from her failures and messed up and before long from learning from her failures she became better because that's how you learn at first you don't succeed try try again and that's how you relate to a character because us as people we mess up and we learn from our mistakes and when we see a character do the things and make mistakes and learn now we're bonded with that character now we relate to them now we understand them no matter if they're not the same color same gender as us it doesn't matter we relate to that character because like yeah I failed like that before and it, it gives you that, that confidence well, a good hero heroic stories or the hero's journey gives you the idea like hey if i just keep striving i can achieve things that's what yeah. a good hero does they inspire you that is the message of superman he is supposed to be like the inspiration to us all because even though he has abilities that we can't even come close to he also has uh the same feelings we do and yeah it's so bad to give everything he has for other people which we have i mean so though he does things we can't do physically he has the heart right of it. yep and that's what makes it work and that's that's something i just i, I thought needed to be pointed out cuz even in a conversation i had today and somebody even tried to point out like well what was the why did everybody complain about ray cuz luke skywalker got an x wing and suddenly knew what all the buttons did okay well luke skywalker yeah, he mentions flying around in a t16 skyhopper uh, going through beggar's canyon bullseyeing womp rats now Look at it this way also. You drive a car. You buy a new car. Did it suddenly change because you went from one car to another car? No, you can still drive oh. it. So, yeah, he had a little bit of time, and even uh, the radio dramas and the book even got into, he was supposed to be doing some battle simulators because he's not really been in a battle before. So they did try to teach him but they, you know, with limited time, but he's really he's flown things before, and he knows how to shoot stuff in a, in a thing. So, no, he didn't just suddenly gain abilities. And even with the Force, he had to learn. And the only thing he knew to do in that first movie was to reach out and, and feel it because Obi-Wan had taught him at least only that much. So, no, he doesn't suddenly get instant things that he didn't earn. He did learn things as, we, as he grew up. And, and we but, really don't know how long he was on Dagobah. It never on, gave us a time well, frame. Well, I'm not even talking about Dagobah. I'm talking first movie because that's what people were fussing well, about. First well, movie, true. so how did he know all the buttons doing the X-Wing? Like, well, he knew how to fly one of these things, and how different might it have been from his T-16 Skyhopper that he used to pilot on Tatooine? Well, one thing my my father used to say to me, you know, he was talking about all the newer movies coming out, and he was getting more and more special effects. Now, this is when I was a kid. Keep in mind, this is when it's still mostly stop animation and all that, with some animation of uh, lasers and all that. It was, it was still animation. There wasn't computer stuff really yet until a little bit later. But he was saying that the only thing that he didn't like as he saw things going this direction when aliens and all that stuff was getting more and more popular, he said uh, he liked growing up. He liked a lot of those. But he said that he was afraid that one day he was going to get more into the special effects and less from the story. Yeah. He's right. Um, but it hadn't got to that yet. He said he saw it coming in the future. And he was correct. Because they grew up with movies where there was a lot more story with very little special effects. But – as the special effects got more and more advanced, people thought you don't have to have as much story. Yeah. But we can dazzle you with our effects. That special effects without story is a boring thing. And George Lucas said that. Yeah. And one thing I'm, I've got to bring up Ian Malcolm again here, because he, oh, he always has great lines in the first Jurassic Park. Oh, when he, especially, yeah. When he talks about the problem with what, uh, what uh, Hammond was doing with building this park is like, you stood on the backs of other people and now mm -hmm. you want to sell it. You didn't earn the discipline of discovery yourself. And that's what happens if you have a character, you just jump up and you just give them the keys of the kingdom. They didn't earn the discipline to use it and wield it. And next thing you know, you got a T-Rex out there eating lawyers. And we're going to sell it. We're going to sell it. <laughs> and we're going to sell We're going to sell it. So, yeah. I, 
I had to bring, I feel like I bring this topic up uh, in a lot of frequent episodes, but I, there was just stuff, and I don't want to get in arguments on Twitter because it's just a cesspool. Oh, no, no. But I, I'm like, when I see it, I'm like, no, here's where these people are not thinking and they're not paying attention to these characters. They, the, the characters, they're some claiming, oh, they just suddenly did it. No, they earned it. Here's where it was. But uh, I want to move on to the next thing because we are running out of time. The sure, Jetsons. Because sure. did you see the George Jetson that actually would have been born this year and actually just, uh, uh, was it this month or last month? George Jetson would be alive on this earth. Baby George, wherever you're at, we love you. <laughs> yeah, wherever you're at. Sorry we didn't get your flying cars and we don't have cities in the skies. But, uh, but oh. I, I, I had to talk a little bit. I mean, the Jetsons, actually, you can watch on HBO Max right now. Yes, that's all. I have every episode of the original. I don't know if every episode ever made yet, but I'm pretty sure it is. But that's a great show. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun how it crossed over from like in the 60s and then like in the 80s you had uh, where it looks like the animation was almost the animation looks almost computerized in that yeah. those uh, kid oh. games that they had like little animated characters like the little fish uh, they started looking like that with Orbity. Yes, uh, but the yeah, Jetsons was a great cartoon. I, I love. Remember their janitor. Oh yeah, the, the handyman. Yeah, what uh, was Henry. his name? Henry. Henry. That's it. I can never remember his name, but I always loved him too. You know, he he's like yeah, or, uh, he's like uh, oh hey there Elroy and Elroy. Elroy is one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course, I, I don't think he was in the original sixties. I think it was mainly in the, when they in the eighties when it was a Saturday morning show where they had Uniblab. Yes. That annoying little snitch of a of robot that was always pretending to be your friend, and then you'd get you to say something, then you'd run to Mr. Spacely. Oh, yeah. He was a creep. He was a creep. But I love, you know, the one thing that they did that I loved on that show, too, is that you had Spacely, and then you had Cogsworth. Yes, he was like his- Cogswell Cogs. Yeah, he was great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Spacely Sprockets have lost for years to the, Cos- the Coswell's Cosmic Team or, or Spacely. No, the Spacely. Oh, yeah. Cogswell's Gears have lost for years to the Spacely Sprocket Team. Remember that episode? It's the Little League teams where yeah. they had Elroy and they had Spacely's or no, Cogswell Cogs' son versus Elroy in the Little League games. Yeah, I love that one. And I love how it was, man, you know, you talk about cheating on some of the sports they would do. I think it was the baseball or, the, or maybe it's the basketball. Maybe it's both. Who yeah, knows? They had but a they football had- where it was all robots. <laughs> You remember how they had these little jet packs on? Yeah. <laughs> jump up and, brrr, with, and you're like, wow. That this doesn't amazing. take athletic ability anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, they did the same thing with like a wrestling thing. You're like, wow. Wouldn't that make it easy to kind of get up high and put a basket in? Yeah. Oh, and one <laughs> other weird thing I want to point out, like the one where they uh, they were it had the thing that granted them wishes and George wanted yeah. to be a superhero. He became Super George. Yeah. What did it happen? Because he didn't know how to use his powers. He ripped the car apart trying to open the door. I remember. I love that show. Great show. And, I, and of course, Astro. Yes. You love oh, George. Rory. <laughs> Yeah, I love you, George. <laughs> Get uh, off me! My- <laughs> I would love to have seen a crossover with Scooby Doo and Astro. Oh, that would have been great. I love, <laughs> I really love the movie they made where the Jetsons meet the Flintstones. Yeah, that was a- I-, I love though. Whenever one of my favorite endings of all time, because you know the Jetsons was really be- it was because of the Flintstones. I mean, everyone knows that, but. It was a tremendous thing where you have, of course, Flint in the Flintstones, you know, Wilma. And because his that stupid cat who was really not on the show that much, <laughs> right. the who, who, who put him out the door <laughs> is the ending of everyone. So then what they have to do for the Jessons, and I love it, where he's walking <laughs> this cat who they really didn't have. Right. Or no, he was walking the dog. And this cat jumps up there and you have Jane, give me off this crazy yep, thing. Stop this crazy thing. <laughs> and I love how uh, I don't know if you ever seen the movie. Uh, oh, what was it? Uh, <sighs> so I married an axe murderer. Yeah. So you have Mike Myers again. We're back to him. Yeah, Mike back Myers to him singing this song. And he 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 do this beatnik rhythm all the yeah. way through. Cause he find a a girl, and he's at one point he goes Jane. Get me off this crazy thing called love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, I don't even know if that movie made it to theaters, but I saw it on HBO. <laughs> it did. It did. I had the soundtrack, and it, that was on there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, wasn't it? There she goes. There she goes again. Wasn't that on that, that soundtrack? 
Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. all right. But now to keep the show rolling, time for some tributes to all the people who have passed away. And I'm starting, and uh, well, you know, for those of you who are still listening as Disney fans, David Warner passed away uh, yes. July 24th. Uh, David Hattersley Warner. And I'm mainly bringing him up for two major movies. Uh, of course, I do remember seeing him. He, when he played Jack the Ripper in, in Time After Time. Yeah, uh, it's a great movie. But uh, he, of course, he, he played some Klingons in Star Trek. Uh, what was his character in Tron? He was the villain other than the Master Control program. Yeah, he was the main villain. Uh, what was his name? I'm sitting around to look it up here. He ran the whole company. Mm, um, yes. Yeah. Not only did he play uh, on in Star Trek VI, but in Star Trek V, he played a human being who was there. And then on Star Trek The Next Generation, he played a, a Kardashian. A, a, um, not a Cardassian. Uh, yeah, Cardassian. yeah, the Cardassians. Yeah, not as who, the Kardashians, uh, the Kardashians. And, uh, and he, the kidnapped uh, Picard, and he kept asking him, "How many lights do you see?" And he wanted him to say three, but there was four. And so Picard finally yelled back, "There are four lights." <laughs> oh goodness! Let's see if I can find. Oh my gosh! I found a lot of things listed. I'm looking for Tron on, on the list of things he I did. Remember, one or two. I think it was two. He was on. Tons of movies. Yeah, Ed Dillinger or Sark. Oh, and he was also the voice of the Master Control program. It says here. Ah, well, that's interesting. Yeah, he, he did a voice on. Um, I want to say. Well, he was Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. No, it was one of those. Mm-hmm. He was Ra- for Batman he, animated series before Batman. There was something. Because yeah, yeah. I can't remember which Batman, but. Uh, he did one of the voices for, for on Batman the Animated Series. I remember that. Or at least he was yeah, in it he's, somewhere. He was Ra's al Ghul. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. But it yeah, would, yeah. I, I don't know if there was a, a previous. Uh... Oh, but I of course, know. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Youth, Professor Jordan Perry. Yes. There we yes, go. Yes, I, I loved him in that. Yes, indeed. Uh, is this going to be live or, or, or can we edit it? Because I I, I do tend to ramble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, professor, we're live. So it's so great. Yeah, he was so great and had such fun characters. And, and almost everything he did, he oh, he was in Titanic. Uh, yes, I don't know if it was that was it the the major Titanic one. Um, I did see something, but I think it was an older Titanic. The, the, the um, no, he was, was the, the ninety seven, the main villain. Um, he was protecting him, and uh, you saw when the ship was split in half, he was right next to it and going down with it. Hmm. Spicer Lovejoy. Oh, got nominated yeah. for a Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a cast in a motion picture. Oh, and he got yeah. to narrate in Pooh's Grand Adventure, The Search for Christopher Robin. Oh, cool. Uh, he was in the 2001 Planet of the Apes, which I didn't see. That was the uh, Tim Burton attempt. He was, he was in that? Yeah. Terry Pratchett's well, Hogfather. There you go. It would almost surprise me if he wasn't in more things than, we, than we're aware of, because... He was in so many things. Admiral Boom and Mary Poppins Returns. Oh, oh I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So I much stuff. I saw him. Every time I see him, I'm like, yes. Yep. But I got to move on to our next person, which I only know him for one character. Tony Dow oh. as Wally Cleaver on Leave it to Beaver. Well, Tony was one of those who always appeared. A lot of times people would have him show up either as himself or uh, because in the eighties they'd have him and Jerry show up together, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because of Wally and Beef, and they stayed became very good friends. And they'd have him and and uh, what's her name who played his, his their mom. They'd have them show up together. Yeah, and uh, he was just a he was basically a staple of uh, TV. You know, just yeah. we all. And he was a good guy. He was a really good guy. But look, there's a lot of TV mentions. I mean, General Hospital. Night Rider, yes. Quincy M.E., Murder She Wrote, Back to the Beach. I remember yeah. that. The new Leave It to Beaver. That's right. One episode you of Charles in Charge. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Dickie Roberts, former child star. Yeah, there was a lot of people that popped up, and that was kind of fun. They had a sequel uh, movie and then TV show on Disney mm-hmm. Channel, the old Disney Channel. Yeah. Of, uh, the uh, new Leave It to Beaver. Sure. Also, yeah. oh, still the Beaver. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, still Beaver, yeah. Oh, goodness, yeah. So he did pop up a lot of television. Uh, but, yeah, as, as you were saying, a lot of times him and Jerry Mathers would show up together. Yeah, Jerry would. And, well, he was very affable. Yeah. Uh, he, a very affable man. 
and just seemed to be really a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Also, we've lost Paul Sorvino, which yes. had he had three children, including Mira Sorvino. Yes. Yes, indeed. But uh, I, the main things I want to be able to point out to you is Lips Manless and Dick Tracy. Yes. Eddie Valentine and the Rocketeer. I'm always yes. going to love him best for he those. So he was also a half brother to Worf on Next Generation of Star Trek. As a, he played a Klingon, or is he really related to Michael Dorn? Half brother to Worf. Uh, on there, uh, he wasn't, you know, Klingon, but he was. Uh, you could see him. He just had a little thing on his nose. Oh, and, uh, okay. I don't remember if he was half brother or a doctor brother. I don't remember how it worked, but he was related to him, and you could see uh, he was on there, and it was it was a good uh, episode, a really good episode. He's he was on so many things. He was a, he played mm-hmm. a gangster a lot because yeah. you know because he, he's it's, Italian. It's, uh, <laughs> he was on Goodfellas, and he was on so mm-hmm. many movies. But he was so he was so good on everything I saw him on. Yeah, he was on Nixon. He was on he was on a lot of things. Yeah, I'm looking at this long, long list, and not everything he was in that I see, uh, but uh, I, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, a tremendous actor, a really great one. Yeah, my Jurassic Place to be a, as posthumous release. That's right where it seems serious, and I loved him in Rocketeer. Yes, my favorite line he says in there. He said something about not being honest because yeah. he's you know gangster. He said I may not be honest. He goes, but I earned a, uh, uh, an honest buck. But uh, he's talking about. I already said, but I'm a uh, honest blood American, and yeah. I love. Uh, I sure ain't no Nazi. <laughs> that's what, what he would not go along with the villain because right. he's he's pure American. He was not going all the way that direction. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, it's funny that him and the uh, the cops that uh, were kind of knew that he was yeah. up to no good, and they're looking back and forth as they're both fighting Nazis together. They kind of exchange and look like, "Hey, uh, okay." Enemies, <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Enemies and yet frenemies in that moment. Yep, yep, uh, and. Rocketeer is still a great movie, no matter what people say oh that it's not great. Really I love is. it. I love it. We both have a Rocketeer figure uh, yeah, absolutely. that we bought. A very nice figures. Mine's still in my box, but you've got yours out and flying around the room. And of course, oh my goodness, Nichelle Nichols, Board Grace Dell oh, Nichols. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, Nichelle Nichols, one of my favorites. Mm. She really, she did a lot and uh, didn't even know that she did uh, herself uh, for a long time. She wanted to quit the show Star Trek. She was known as the one of the very first uh, African American ladies um, who did a lot of things. Uh, of course, the first interracial kiss on TV uh, between her and William Shatner, and and uh, but she wanted to quit. And Martin Luther King Jr. asked her not to because mm-hmm. kids everywhere were seeing her. Not just kids, but people everywhere, but kids everywhere were seeing her. Uh, and she was a sign of the future because she was supposed to be, you know, in the future. And um, and he asked her, "Please stay." And so she did, especially because yeah. Martin Luther King Ooh. Jr. I mean, they actually have a, they actually have her telling the story. So is that yes. we, so? So, she, so this is where she's she's even, even about to leave Star Trek to take a role on Broadway. So that weekend, Nichols attended a banquet that was being run by the NAACP, where she was informed that a fan really wanted to meet her. And here's uh-huh. a quote from her: "I thought it was a Trekkie, and so I said, sure. I looked across the room, and whoever the fan was had to wait because there was Dr. Martin Luther King walking towards me with his big uh-huh. grin on his face. He reached out to me and said, "Yes, Miss Nichols, I am your greatest fan." He said that Star Trek was the only show that he and his wife Coretta would allow their three children to stay up and watch. She told King about her plans to leave the series because she wanted to take a role that was tied to Broadway. I never got to tell him why because he said, you cannot, you cannot. For the first time on television, we will be seen as we should be seen every day as intelligent, quality, beautiful people who can sing, dance, and go into space who are professors, lawyers. Dr. King Jr. went further stating, if you leave, that door will be closed because your role is not a black role and is not a female role, he can fill it with anybody, even an alien. Yeah. And Uhura, and it, was, they didn't make a big deal, like, oh, look, we have a black woman on the on the bridge. No, she no. was just there doing her job, being part of the bridge crew, and nobody made a big deal. They, she was just there. And that's how you did it. Gene Roddenberry was so genius about. Yes. Season two, when they put Chekhov in there, mm-hmm. it was a, a symbol of... Perhaps peace between, uh, you know, because as you know, it was a time of the Cold War, and he was trying to make a, a symbol, not saying, "Oh, look, we have a Russian." He's trying to say that in the future there is going to be peace. Mm-hmm. And I just loved it. He didn't make a big deal about it. It was just this is a human. Yeah, he just oh, yeah. threw it into the world and just there you go. There it was. How he did it with an with an undercurrent. That's mm-hmm. how it ought to be. Not right out in your face. Oh, look. Yeah, he no, didn't have to just, preach on it and brag about. Look what I did. 
He just there yeah, it was. That, and it was the way it was even with their messages on the show. It was an undercurrent. It was never yeah. out in the open like this is what we're doing today. Yeah. It today was, we're going to talk about. No, it was never that. It was designed to make you think about it yourself and not somebody tell yeah. you what you're supposed to think. Just like here's something to think about and not yeah. agree with me or else. There's a difference. It's, I exactly. do notice a, co- a common thing with Tony Dow, The Adventures of Captain Zoom in Outer Space in 1995. Oh, cool. Both of her and Tony Dow have that credit uh, as, a, as a film there. She That's was, cool. But what's neat is, have you ever heard of Porgy and Bess? She was a dancer have, on there. You know, I've heard of that, actually. Yeah, I've heard of it. I've never seen any of it, but uh, I think Katie Lee has mentioned it to me that she was a big fan of that when she was a little girl. But then, all right, today's big passing, uh, well, of course, by the time you hear it, it's not today. Uh, and this uh, but this is uh, another big hit on me because, I mean, this was, I think, probably my first crush when I was a kid. All the time. Yeah. Olivia Newton-John passed away today. I don't know if they've said why, but she did. She'd gone through a lot of cancer. Uh, yes. She had had breast cancer, I think, twice. Uh, and the cancer at one point had gotten into her back. I was actually watching uh, some clips oh, yeah. and some news footage. Everybody's putting out news footage. But uh, her current husband actually was uh, growing medicinal cannabis. And she was using that to deal with the pain in the back. And she said not only did it was help the pain, but it helped it out with a lot of other things. I'm like, you were high as a kite when you died, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it did help her. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it did. I hope it took away some pain. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I hope at least did that. That poor soul. Yeah. You know, uh, I, of course, my favorite thing would always be Greece because I, you know, I know a lot of the guys always love seeing her in the, the black tights. I'm not going to say it didn't look nice. I will say this though. The character itself, um, I always liked her as a, uh, Sandy, the sweet, innocent, yeah. and that was my Sandy. Although you know? at least the, the the plot of the movie is the corruption of Sandy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, really. I was one of the other, the opposite. I like the sweetness, Sandy. Yeah, she, there was her nothing voice. wrong with her before, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, she's sweet the way she was. Uh, I, I, she should have. I mean, the way I would have had it, where she was fixing him, she's already working on, it, and he was doing it. He was going yeah. back the good way. But in truth, um, I think she had one of the strongest. Uh, voices, yeah. one of the most beautiful voices I've ever heard in my life. And two of my favorite songs, Xanadu and Magic. Yeah. I remember you were always into that, you know? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I always liked that. And I, when I was a little kid, I've said this before, but when I was a little kid and we were, I was in kindergarten and we were in uh, g- the gym. And I had a gym teacher who looked an awful lot like her. And oh, she goodness. was always playing the song, Let's Get Physical. Now, I didn't know what that meant. I thought physical. <laughs> Well, we were in PE, physical right. education, and um, she would do that workout, and we'd be doing that w- with her, and I had no idea what the song really meant, but yeah. really seemed like at the time, because I knew who Olivia knew John was, obviously, and I seen enough of the pictures of how she was dressed and the video, mm-hmm. uh, I... It seemed like I was there with Olivia Newton John working out to that song. <laughs> uh, yeah, and when you watch the video, it the, the video the video is very much looks like the twenty minute workout. You know, it just sure. seems about exercise. And it's not until I got older I listened to the song. I'm like, whoa, that's suggestive. <laughs> that, that's not. Yeah, it's exercise, all right. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's it's okay. Never mind. No, no, this is a family show. I won't make the joke I was going to make. I won't do it. I won't do it. I'll tell you later. <laughs> And would you believe that when we re- originally recorded this episode, I completely forgot about the late, great Pat Carroll, voice of Ursula from The Little Mermaid, a fantastic actress, great voice. She did a lot of other things before that that uh, I haven't gotten a chance to, to research. It's just while I'm editing the show here, I realized we forgot about Pat Carroll, and I, I had to say something. Uh, she is definitely one of my favorite Disney villains. Uh, one of my favorite Disney movies. Uh, she will definitely be missed, but she had such a great impact, and she really loved playing Ursula, and she was such a nice and sweet lady whenever you see any video footage of her. Uh, but I always talk about how much fun she had playing Ursula, and she loved doing that laugh, although it took a lot out of her to do it, apparently. So also a tribute for Pat Carroll. So we're going to add this as a total of six tributes on this show. Well, seven if you count George Jetson, which I'm about to. Here it comes. But uh, so this, uh, there's our tribute to both to George Jetson, David Warner, Tony Dow, Paul Sorvino, Nichelle Nichols, and Olivia Newton-John, and every character and story that's done the right way that we can relate to. Uh, but really, we're, we're over an hour, so it's time we wrap this puppy up. 
Yes. So I've got to remind you all to visit NeverlandPodcast.com. Make sure you check out. We have on there, right in the middle of the page, my podcast reviews. Uh, for just a low, low fee, you can uh, subscribe for a year, and you can get all your reviews sent to your inbox. Uh, and you can get them from around the world because Apple only shows you th- your your native country. But, of course, we want to thank Karen Kennedy, Ricky Popo, Christian Nerds Unite. By the way, keep him in your prayers, those of you that pray. Uh He's, he's got COVID. Uh, his wife actually Jeff, did have some successful heart surgery. Uh, she appears to be doing good now. That's been a week kind of following me on Facebook and what's been going on. But uh, he's had some COVID issues. And uh, apparently at one point in the hospital spilled some ice on himself. <laughs> but uh, so be thinking of Ricky, Ricky Pope. He's a good guy. Uh, Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite and Wall Show. Thank all three of them for helping me out with our intro. And uh, don't forget, podcast at NeverlandPodcast.com. You can send, it, send us an email. You can follow us on Twitter, NeverlandPCast. Find us on Facebook at Neverland Podcast. We have both the group and the fan page. And make sure, of course, you visit our Patreon, patreon.com slash Neverland Podcast, because uh, you, this, this show, you know, it really needs your support to keep this thing going. And make sure, hey, when you go to the website, go to our shop and check out all the new shirts. I've uh, actually ordered a shirt for Philip for his birthday that hopefully we'll both be wearing on August 20th. Those of you in the uh, northern Kansas City area, I believe it's going to be Open Door Baptist Church, Eternity Ready Ready Radio. Uh, that's actually where I do the the podcast actually streams on this service, as long as another show I do. We're going to be live doing a live show on that day. It starts at 9 o'clock in that morning. I'm not sure when we'll actually start recording our show, but we will be there. Philip and I, if you want to come and meet us and maybe even be a part of the show and We'll talk to that. We'll ask you some weird questions. Maybe we'll play some trivia. I don't know. But uh, Philip is doing weird things in this camera. <laughs> okay. It looks like he's blowing kisses or something and hitting buttons on his phone. But, anyways, all right, Philip, you know what we need to do? Get lost. Yes. In an adventure! <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>